Okay, so in today's video, we're going to continue talking a bit about profit. And if you watched the last video, you will know why at this quantity Q1, we trace up to each of our average revenue and average cost curves, and then our profit becomes this shaded area over here. And also that because this point happens to be where MC intersects MR, it is also our profit maximization point. Now, the first idea we'll introduce is the fact that this profit shown on the diagram here, the total revenue area subtracted by the total cost area, is a type of profit we call abnormal profit or economic profit. And I'm just going to first mention that that is what they're called, and I'm going to explain why later. But just keeping in mind that this shaded area is abnormal or economic profit, abnormal profit being the term preferred in the syllabus. And now I want us to take a look at an alternative scenario. And here, all I've done is I've just shifted around the position of the curves a little. And I want us to look at the profit maximization point on this diagram, where MC intersects MR. And I'll call this quantity Q2. And let's repeat that process of showing the total profit on this diagram. We first go up to the AR curve to get total revenue. And then we should do the same to get to the ATC average total cost curve to get total cost. But if we try to do that, we'll actually find that we end up at the same point as where we are trying to figure out total revenue. Because our AR happens to be equal to our AC at this point, meaning our total revenue is actually equal to our total cost. And based on our profit equation, our profit is zero. And here comes the interesting part. Where we have the situation in the diagram here, where we have zero, none of that abnormal economic profit, we don't say we're making no profit. We actually say that we're not making any abnormal profit and that we are making normal profit. Which then leaves us with the question of what is this idea of abnormal and normal profit? And the distinction between the two starts with the idea of implicit and explicit cost, which is a way of just distinguishing cost in a way that's different from fixed and variable costs, it has nothing to do with that distinction. In this case, explicit cost is the typical cost that we think of, where cost is in the form of money it cost us to get the things we needed, example being rent and cost of ingredients. Now, implicit cost, on the other hand, is the opportunity cost of those explicit costs, those spendings. For example, if it is costing someone $10,000 of explicit cost to run their pet shop, the implicit cost is what other things could that money have been used for, perhaps another business or a vacation, that this person had to forego, give up, when they spent that explicit cost on the pet shop. And noting what implicit and explicit cost is, when we look at our profit equation, our total cost is actually the sum of implicit and explicit cost, meaning that when our total profit is equal to zero, we aren't making no profit because our revenue has covered both the explicit cost in terms of the money spent, as well as implicit cost, which was the opportunity cost of that explicit cost. And when total profit is zero, we say a firm is making normal profit because they have just about covered both their monetary expenses of explicit costs, as well as that cost of remaining in this business, that implicit opportunity cost. So their profit is normal, the minimum amount that justifies why they would continue producing in this situation. Because the cost they incur from not doing whatever else they can do, losing the benefits of the alternative option they gave up, has already been covered, so they would continue producing in this situation. An alternative situation where we have a total profit greater than zero, it means not only did we cover the money spent as cost and the opportunity cost, 
we have earned even more profit beyond that. And this level of profit beyond the normal level of profit that justifies a firm's existence is called abnormal profit. And the sort of last scenario here is if we were making less than zero, so negative profit, in which case a firm hasn't been able to cover their implicit and or explicit cost and is incurring a loss. And it somewhat fails to justify why a firm would continue operating and not close down. And to sum up today's video, when AR is equal to AC, we make normal profit, which is when the total profit is equal to zero and implicit and explicit costs are covered, thus being able to justify why a firm would continue to operate. And then we have when AR is greater than AC, we make abnormal profit, total profit is greater than zero, and we're earning beyond covering implicit and explicit cost. And lastly, we have when AC is greater than AR, we are incurring a loss, total profit is less than zero, and a firm has failed to cover their implicit and or explicit cost. And these three situations are points of emphasis on the syllabus, so you might want to take a screenshot of this short summary if you think you'll find it helpful in the future. But yeah, that brings us to the end of rational producer behavior. And in the next video, we will use what we've learned so far as a foundation to start discussing the different market structures as well as the idea of market power.